for paint flow, you once again turn the nozzle up or down, depending on how much paint you want to apply. Darren recommends this airbrush for the model who wants to achieve a more controlled finish, without too much expense. It's certainly a good all-rounder. The Masterclass is the main airbrush which Darren uses to paint all his models in Model Rail. Being a dual action brush, you have control of the paint by pulling on the trigger, further back for more paint, and by pressing down on the trigger at the same time for air. With a fine nozzle in place, a thin line can be obtained with more control. As well as removing excess solder, glue or flux, you'll also need to remove oxidisation because, on either brass or white metal, the surface does actually oxidise. White metal over time develops a powdery finish, which, as with brass, will prevent the primer sticking to it. While you're running the wire brushes over the model, you will see this fine powder come off and a shiny surface will appear, which is just what you want for a successful paint job. Using the fine setting on the airbrush, ensure first that all the corners, nooks and crannies and edges are evenly coated. After all, you don't want to get the airbrush set up again after cleaning it all, just to deal with a small area that you've missed. The danger of coating the model all over first would be that the wet paint would hide any small areas missed in recessed details or corners. Spraying finely into the corners first also prevents paint buildup on each of the flat surfaces later on. Care must be taken applying the first piece of masking tape, especially with something like this Virgin Buffy car. Make sure all the angles are correct and that you have the tape edge to the correct side. It sounds silly, but you can put your tape on the wrong side of the masking line very easily. The tape must be pressed down very securely. Using Eurostar, you'll notice the tape go dark as it's rubbed on. If you have a lot of models to paint in the same colour, you could make a card template with the correct angle as a guide. It's best to hold an airbrush about 6 to 8 inches away from the model. That way, the paint does not go on dry by having to travel too far and does not go on too wet by being too close. You will get the maximum control of the paint at this distance. An orange peel finish is a result of the paint being too thick and the airbrush being too close. On the other hand, you can use too much thinners and work too close, making the paint run. You have to learn to strike the right balance. Once you have, it will stay with you. Weathering is an area in which a decent airbrush with a fine needle and the correct paints really comes into its own. There's no way a standard sable brush could possibly recreate the fine work needed. First, apply a light coat of dirty black to the main body sides, roof and ends. You can add a touch of track colour or sleeper grime to this to change the tint a bit. This can be useful if you do not want all your models to look exactly the same. Add some dirty black to all of the body side grills, especially the cant rail grills. Don't worry if the paint looks like it is all over the place, this won't be noticeable later on. Squirt a little of the cleaner through the front of the main body and also through the pickup tube. Once again, a pipe cleaner soaked in cleaner comes in handy. When no paint trace has come out on the cleaner, you know it's clean, but not until.
Once you're satisfied that the brush is clean, you can reassemble it in the order it was dismantled. If you're unsure about taking an airbrush apart, place the parts in the diagrammatic order that you took them apart. You'll soon get the hang of it.